We're jumping back in. Let's go straight to you Capitol Hill. Hill. This is the minority leader, Hakeem Jeffries. Let's listen in. That President Biden was elected in 2020. That's disrespectful to the American people. Jim Jordan wants to impose a nationwide abortion ban. And he is the poster child for MAGA extremism. We are saying to our traditional Republican colleagues, good men and women on the other side of the aisle, in the attachment to the extremist Jim Jordan and join with Democrats in finding a bipartisan path forward. Leader Jeffries, is your understanding at this point? Captain Clark. We are 17 days in to a choice by the majority of chaos, a choice to reject coming together and putting the people of this great country over their civil war, their partisan bickering and movement to extremism. This is a choice by the majority, and we are re-emphasizing what our caucus and leader has been saying for the past two weeks. Come together. You are weakening our country. You are weakening this institution. You are ignoring the work of the American people. The time is now. Choose a bipartisan path forward. Pete Aguilar. Well, Pete Aguilar. Jim Jordan has failed at every vote, and he's going to continue to fail. Uh, House Democrats are united behind Leader Jeffries. We want a path forward. Uh, we want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to meet the needs of the American public. Two objectives this week for House Democrats. One is to make sure Jim Jordan does not get close to the Speaker's chair. And the second is to reopen the House of Representatives. Uh, we still have work to do, uh, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. We're going to advocate for a bipartisan and path forward and continue that discussion until we open up the chamber. Leader Jeffries, it seems like a bipartisan path forward is what you're talking about, but in our conversations with Republicans, it sounds dead. What makes you think that there's a reason for it to be revived? Well, there are still reasonable Republicans over on the other side of the aisle, as I've repeatedly said, good men and women who want the House reopened, who want the Congress to function. And what we've said is we just want a House that allows for bipartisan bills that benefit the American people, not Democrats or Republicans, the American people. We want a House that allows for bipartisan bills to receive up or down votes, that will receive the majority of members on both sides of the aisle, but are being blocked right now by the extremists. Leader Jeffries, are you confident that you would have all of your people here this weekend to continue to block Mr. Jordan, that you have enough votes every single roll call vote this weekend? We recognize that Jim Jordan is a clear and present danger to the American people. And we are going to be here for as long as it takes to end this national nightmare. Do you hear from any moderate Republicans who will be willing to partner with you on a speaker candidate? It's a question you should ask them. Leader Jeffries, at this point, would you ever vote at, for Patrick McHenry on the floor? I've said repeatedly that there are many Republicans on the other side of the aisle who we believe are good Americans, good patriots, good men and women. Patrick McHenry is one of them. There are others. Sir, have you spoken directly with any of your Republican colleagues about a bipartisan path forward? I haven't spoken directly with Patrick McHenry. What do you say to those who believe Democrats are to blame for the situation that we're in since you all voted with those eight Republicans to oust McCarthy? Well, the job of uh, the House Republicans is to elect a speaker who can get to 218 votes and to sustain a speaker at 218 votes. That is the job of the majority. From the very beginning of the republic, going back to 1789. And by the way, who created Jim Jordan? Who normalized Jim Jordan? Who was about to Why nominate, who was about, who was about to absent, nominate sir. Jim Jordan? That's clear. And are you okay if they were to go ahead and elect, elect a speaker pro tem, as they did in the early 60s after Speaker Rayburn, so the House could operate? I mean, that's what you're saying here, that, that that type of option is on the table, and that's something you'd be okay with because of the... What we're saying is that all options are on the table to get the House back open so we can do the business of the American people. And is McHenry the only name that's in that conversation? Is McHenry the only name that's in that conversation? No. 
Who are the other names that you're, is it Steve Womack? Are there other names? Can we just kind of get into detail? I think you've got to ask the other side of the aisle who they're willing to put forward. We have been. If you guys went to, if every Democrat went to the floor and they voted for a Republican today, you could probably find a handful of Republicans who would join you organically in that moment. Would you take that step today? Voted for a Republican to be Speaker of the House. Yes. We'd have to have a real conversation about what that would look like. Is that a challenge because your side, obviously there are some on your side who just have such antipathy for Republicans that they could not potentially do that? No, let's be clear. Let's be clear. We have said repeatedly for the last two weeks that we are ready, willing, and able to find a bipartisan path forward to enter into a partnership with our Republican colleagues to reopen the House, to get the business of the American people done, to solve problems for hardworking American taxpayers. We just need some traditional Republicans to join us. Instead of rejecting bipartisanship, they need to stop embracing extremism. Thank you. Thank you, sir.